Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm so glad that you've joined me because we're gonna talk about tips on how to improve your machine quilting and I promise that none of the tips are practice because let's be honest, you already know that you need to practice but these will be practical tips about posture, where to put your hands, all that kind of stuff that will help you be successful with it. And we're gonna get to that in just a second, but first I have a couple little things to talk through. Um, first of all, thank you so much for those of you that are going to be joining the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along, the flora and foliage. If you're not, no worries, you're still welcome to hang out for the chats. And thank you for everybody that's ordered the kits. We have had um, quite the week of cutting and shipping and filling orders, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support. It is so, um, so appreciated. And again, I have to say my staff is amazing for helping me get all those out the door. And we are still cutting and still shipping. So if you haven't got yours yet, it will be coming soon, I promise. And we are all gearing up for the challenge to launch next Wednesday. Um, when the challenge went live, there were a few products I didn't quite have yet, but I wanted to show you real quick. Um, due to popular request, I have made a cute little fat quarter bundle out of the coordinating prints for the challenge. So. Um, if you watched the last live chat, you've seen that I designed the panel so that we can quilt along if you want. It's not required. And then I also made a collection, a fabric collection, to go along with it. And um, these are just the coordinating prints that go with that. And as well as an adorable pillow panel. This is actually two of them together. And the reason I designed this is, first of all, little things are so cute, right? A little panel, pillow panels, adorable. Uh, but as I have been doing these challenges, I am totally looking through your feedback and taking into consideration. And some people are just too scared to quilt on a big quilt. And that's okay. That's totally fine. These are about a fat quarter size and, you know, not too scary. So you could definitely quilt along on the panel if you want. Or you can make your quilt sandwiches. Or you can pull out an unfinished quilt top you have laying around. Doesn't matter. Just as long as you quilt along with us if you want to. So to find all those products, you can check the uh, link in the description box below. It's right underneath the video. Or you might see a little arrow that says see more and that will take you to it. So hopefully you'll check that out. Um, one thing about the fact that it's almost, you know, it is spring, it's almost summer, things are getting it back to a little bit normal. I don't know how you're feeling, but I'm feeling so hopeful that things are gonna just keep getting better and better um, out there. And as you start traveling, and if you happen to make your way through Kansas City, I hope you'll stop by our quilt shop. It's in Liberty, Missouri. It's just north of Kansas City and uh, just south of Hamilton, Missouri. So if you're gonna be traveling through, I hope you will stop by and say hi. We have a full quilt shop there and you can check it out. And we have some events coming up too, like our Customer Appreciation Week, which will be kicking off in May. Now, I know not all of us will be traveling, that's okay. That's what these live chats are for. We can still connect online. But if you're gonna be traveling, definitely stop through and say hi, would appreciate that. Okay, couple more things and then we'll get to the, the main idea. Um, last week we talked about the panel when I showed it off and kind of talked about uh, the challenge. And there's a question about washing it. So lots of questions in the chat today before I went live. Should you pre-wash, should you not pre-wash? You don't have to pre-wash. You can pre-wash if you want. I don't like to do that because I want to get right to the uh, quilting. And for those of you, there was somebody that was like, what is this pre-washing? Um, if you want to wash your fabric and press it before you actually piece with it, you can definitely do that. Now, the question came up though, it has a lot of red and will that bleed? And it caught me off guard because I thought, ooh, I didn't check that. Well, I did, I went home and I washed a panel and some white solid fabric in hot water and nothing moved or no, no issues there. So if you don't want to pre-wash, you definitely don't have to. If you like pre-washing and ironing, then go for it. You can definitely do that. Um, and we have so many first time challengers. It's been so great on the chats, seeing everybody kind of, you know, comment like, I'm gonna do it, this is my first time. So I just wanna take a quick second to talk about what it looks like. I think when I revealed the uh, challenge, I didn't really talk about where to find the videos and stuff like that. So the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along is a free video series where we work through a project or a technique. In this one, we're gonna be working through nature inspired designs. And you can always find the videos on my YouTube channel. Right. I do have a Facebook group for the um, challenge. I do you know, post stuff on social media, but if you're not on social media, no problem. You can always find the videos on my YouTube channel. You can also find them on my website. So I have links in both places. And Quilting Is My Therapy is the website. Or if you want to go directly to the page, it's FMQ, like free motion quilting, challenge.com. So FMQchallenge.com. So anyway, any of those ways, you'll be able to find the video. And in the video, they'll have links underneath to all the quilting diagrams and all the things that you can take advantage of. So 
If you're not on social media, no worries. You can definitely still participate, and I hope you will. And if you are on social media, I hope you'll post pictures of what you're making or how it's going. I love, love seeing pictures. Um, that's probably one of the things I love the most about the Facebook group is seeing everybody getting their quilt sandwiches ready and the different ways people are piecing them. So um, definitely do that if you're on there. If you're not, no worries. So you don't have to be uh, technology smart. You can just go to YouTube and find it. So. And I'll have a link in the description box below about with my link to my YouTube channel, just in case you're not coming, just in case you're not there right now. All right, so that's kind of some of the um, most important questions that came out. Before I get to the actual tips, I did take today's presentation that I'm going to show you, a little slideshow, and I made it a PDF, and it is in the description box. So later on, if you want to download that and print it off, if you want to have those tips to keep close to you, you definitely can. Um, it's just, I don't always do that, but I like doing it when I can because it's an additional little perk and I, I just want to make sure that you're successful with everything that we're talking about. So, all right, now let's get to the fun part. What are we talking about? Tips for machine quilting. So we know the challenge is going to start next week. The video will be out on Wednesday and then Thursday I'll pop on and answer your questions. You don't have to quilt along at the same time if you don't want to. So if you watch the video, but you haven't had a chance to quilt, no problem. You can ask your questions anytime. I'm glad to answer them. Um, so what, now that we're getting ready to kick off, I went over some of my favorite products. I showed you what we're going to learn. Now I'm going to give you some practical tips on how to have a better process, how to um, have the best setup so that you're successful with your machine quilting. Now I did joke, you do have to practice to become better at free motion quilting. And there's some questions about that and I'll answer them at the end. But there's other things you can take into account too. So I'm going to show you um, some of those things and what it looks like. And then of course, after I'm done, I'll kind of peek back in the chat and see if there's any questions. If I don't answer your question, you can leave it in the comments and I'll try to get to it next week for sure. All right, so when it comes to machine quilting, the first number one thing I would suggest is to have the right height. You want to make sure, whether you're on a sewing machine or a long arm, that you have the correct height for what you're working with. Um, and this is going to be different for every single person and every single situation. Um, but if you can get a couple of things nailed down, it'll be so much easier. Not only will it help you quilt longer if you want to, because your back won't be hurting, but it's going to give you the most control possible. So let's talk about the sewing machine first. So first of all, you want to have your proper height in relationship to the sewing machine, right? So no matter what size your table is, you want to have this set up so where you are equal or, you know, even with it. This is really important and we'll see why here in a second, um, but you're gonna make sure you have a proper chair. Now, you might think, oh, a comfortable chair. Well, I mean, sure. I'm talking about one that's height adjustable or one that is the right height for your table. So most of us, well, I'm sure some of you have custom um, furniture in your sewing room, but not all of us have that option. And so if you're working from your dining room table or a folding table, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a chair that's gonna get you to the right height with your machine. Um, when I traveled and taught classes in person, this was always a common issue because usually we were at a space that wasn't necessarily a sewing space and we would be dealing with um, you know, tables that were different heights. And so sometimes, even though we didn't have the right chair, I would give them quilts to sit on to raise them up or we would stack some chairs. You need to get up to the same, even, or the same um, plane as your sewing machine. It's a lot easier to change your, your uh, chair than your table. But if you want to hack off, you know, hack on your table, that's fine too. So here's the most important thing. When you're quilting, you want your arms to be level, right? I don't want a T-Rex. That's what I call the T-Rex, right? If you're lower than your machine, not only are you fighting gravity pulling on your quilt, but you're fighting gravity trying to keep your hands up. I want to have them even, or I actually like to be a little bit higher so that I'm pressing down. Um, I want to use gravity on my side to help me get control of that quilt and move around. Um, if you go too high though, the problem is you won't be able to see the needle. So there is a, a happy medium there. But if your elbows are down and your hands are up like this, it's going to be really hard to sustain that quilting because you're not, you're kind of fighting gravity in, in multiple ways. Um, and so also use props if necessary. Whatever you need to do to make this a good setup for you, do it. And it's funny because um, I had a picture of um, I didn't put it on here, but a picture of me at the, or the machine, sewing machine, and I have my, um, my presser foot on two boxes. So I have a higher table, so I have a chair that adjusts up, and I have my feet, or my uh, foot on the boxes. So whatever you need to do to make it the right height, even if it looks silly, it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that you have that best scenario, because that's going to give you all the control you need for your hands. 
All right, same thing with a long arm. So you definitely want your long arm to be at the proper height for you as well, because what you don't want to do is have it too low. So it's kind of the opposite. Um, if it's too low, your tendency will be to lean over. And it's really hard to maintain good posture, um, just because I think most people are naturally bad at hunching over. So we want to have it at the right height. And we want to make sure that um, when you're holding on to those handles, that your forearms are parallel to the floor or angled up, right? So I don't want my arms to be down because that means that the machine's gonna be too low. So what you could do, and most machines have adjustable height feet, and honestly, I like my machine, my long arm a little taller than shorter, so my arms are gonna be up a little bit more, uh, but if it's too tall, it can be hard to have your whole range of motion. So just, there's also a happy medium in there. Whatever it is, I don't wanna have it too low because it's gonna be hard to see and I'm gonna be bent over. So either adjust your feet, or try to get that height um, adjusted somehow. All right, so you should be able to see the needle without bending over. So if you already have your long arm set up, this is a little tricky, right? Because you have to adjust it. But if you haven't got a long arm, just keep this in mind. Um, most long arms, like, like I said, have those adjustable feet. When I stand at the machine, I'm holding my handlebars, I'm looking at my arms, I'm making sure that they're either parallel or up a little bit. And then I'm gonna move the machine all in that area and make sure I can still see the needle without bending over. Right, so if I'm too high, it, it would be too hard to see. So um, it's a little bit of a, a special little thing you gotta find, but once you find that sweet spot, you're gonna have a lot easier time with that quilting. And here is me, here, here I am, staying at the long arm, and it just gives you an example of my arms are up a little bit, um, and I, I can see where I'm at, and I'm, it's not too low for me. I will say, though, the one I have at home is a little higher because I prefer it just a, just a tad higher. So you're gonna have to play with that and find what works for you. All right, so too low, got some out of order here, but too low can lead to poor posture, and we saw that. All right, tip number two, staying in the quilting zone. Now, we might be thinking, okay, like the zone where we've got you know the music playing and, and nobody's coming in. That's not exactly what I mean. I mean, you're gonna quilt within your area of control, your uh, control zone or your quilting zone, and that's gonna be a little different on each machine. So on a sewing machine, you want to have the correct hand placement. You have the most control when your hands are on both sides of the needle. So as I'm quilting, and we'll see this in the videos, and sometimes I mention it, if my hands get beyond the needle, I don't have as much control. Now they're away from me and they're away from the needle, and I'm not gonna get the best quilting results. This is by far, by far, by far, my worst habit. I'm really bad at this because I just wanna keep going. I don't wanna stop. But what happens is as I keep going, next thing we know, I'm using my elbows to try to quilt, right? Because I'm not repositioning my hands. So if you haven't developed that bad habit yet, try not to reposition your hands often so that you're always within that control spot. Um, the second bad habit that happens is in classes, I see people not stopping when they reposition their hands. So they'll, they'll be quilting and then they'll just pick their hands up and put them over here. Well, if you don't take your foot off the pedal or slow down a bit, it's gonna keep stitching in place and you're gonna get those kind of small, weird stitches. So if you're gonna reposition your hands, stop, reposition and continue on. I know it can be a little bit of a drag because you wanna keep quilting, but it's gonna give you the best results. Now I will say when it comes to some of these tips, it's kind of like once you know the rule, you can break the rule. Uh, sometimes I'm not really good about stopping either. I'll do like one hand and the other, but I know I should be doing it the other way. So that's gonna be the most important thing when you actually get to quilting, keep your hands on both sides of the needle. So important. All right, so how about on the long arm? It's a little bit different because our hands are always gonna be in the same spot, right? They're not moving, they're on the machine, but the machine is moving. All right, so on a long arm, my control zone is when my hands are right in front of me. So what happens is when we start quilting, we don't wanna move our body because we're scared we'll mess it up. So we start quilting and our arms go over here, right? And the next thing we know, our arms are way over here. Well, that's not gonna have the best control either. Not only is the, you know, my perception gonna be off because it's at an angle, but I'm just gonna not have as much control. So I need to make sure that I'm moving with my hands. And I started to take a little video of this, but I ran out of time. I call it the long arm shuffle, right? So as I'm quilting, I'm taking little baby steps as I'm quilting to help make sure that my hands are in front of me. So that's just gonna give you the most control. Another thing I wanna say is you don't be afraid to stop. I don't know what it is about a long arm, sometimes on a sewing machine, but definitely on a long arm. Um, people are like, I don't wanna stop, I don't know where I'm going, stop. And you can move and then continue on, even if you're doing a wavy line. I know sometimes we're scared that if we stop and we start again, we'll get a little bit of that area where it's a little bit of a, 
a bobble. Trust me, when you're done, you're not gonna see it. It's gonna be fine. And if you do it once, you're probably gonna do it a couple more times. So then you call it texture, right? Don't be afraid to stop and then reposition. It's gonna, you're gonna have the better results that way. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, these are all out of order. So we're just gonna jump around. Um, the next tip is going to be finding the right speed, right? So finding the speed to your hands. And what's great about this is um, somebody emailed me on the contact me button on my page, my website and was like, please tell me what speed to quilt at. I just need to know. I'm struggling, this is, this is driving me nuts. And unfortunately, the only answer I could give her was, well, it depends. I know, isn't that horrible? It's different for everybody. So you wanna find the right speed for you and for the design you're working on. Now, this is talking about quilting without a stitch regulator. So if you have a stitch regulator, not really a problem, right? You can speed up and slow down and your machine will stay with you. Um, but when you're at your machine and if you don't have a stitch regulator, the biggest tip I could give you is adjust your machine, not your movements. Your hands already know what they wanna do. They wanna go the speed they wanna go. You're gonna adjust the speed of your machine to that to, to match it. Now, how will you know if it's right? Well, your stitch length will be in an acceptable range. Now, if you've listened to any of my chats, you know I'm not, a, I don't care if all the stitch length is the same. It's fine if it's different sizes. It will even itself out with time. So try not to worry about it. But if you're getting really tiny stitches, that means your machine is moving too fast for your hands and you need to slow the machine down. If you're getting really big stitches, it means that your machine is moving too slow for your hands and you wanna speed the machine up. See what I'm saying? I'm not moving my hands any different. I'm trying to adjust the speed. Again, this will come with practice. So if you just started quilting, you just put on the first quilt sandwich, you're going, of course it's gonna be hard to figure out, but I promise, I promise it doesn't take that long. And also different designs need different speeds. Think about driving a car. If I'm driving a car down a straightaway, I can go really fast, but if I'm driving in loops and roundabouts, I'm gonna have to slow down. So for tighter designs, like the pebbles that we'll see, or designs that have a change in direction, like leaves, those are gonna take a little bit longer. I need to go a little bit slower. For those long wavy lines of the wood grain, shoot, that's like a straightaway on the highway. I can speed it up and go as fast as I want. So just know that as you change designs, you might have to adjust your speed. And again, it just takes a little practice. Try not to get too frustrated or be too hard on yourself. The number one thing about this though that I can say is it's really easy to be distracted by the sound of a machine. So what, what does that even mean, right? So when I would teach in a class, I kind of would be a little mean. So I would be going around and somebody would be quilting really slow, right? And I'm like, okay, let's, let's turn up the machine. So I turn it up. Well, then they make their hands go faster because the sound of the machine is going faster. It's like we want to match that, and you don't have to do that. You wanna keep your hands going the same, same way. And again, again, it comes with practice, but once you find that sweet spot, it'll be the perfect speed for you. The problem is everybody is a little different. But I can give you one little tip. If you are um, able to critique the job you're doing while you're doing it, you're quilting too slow, right? So if you're thinking, this circle doesn't look good, this circle doesn't look good, it sure doesn't look good, that's too slow. You're like, oh, I hope that looked good because I'm already moved on to the next one. So that uh, keep that for what it's worth. All right, so those are the main things, right? You wanna have the right, you wanna be in the right zone, you wanna have the right height, and you wanna have the right speed, and of course practice. But there are a couple other things that will help you, and these didn't really fall within a great um, section, so I just kind of lumped them all together. First of all, aim for smooth lines. Smooth will look perfect every time, even if it's not. So if I want my wavy lines to be perfectly echoed, that's great, but I would rather have my wavy lines be smooth because if they're smooth, they'll look fine. It's when we have these jagged or these bobbles, that's when it tends to be more noticeable. Again, it's not the end of the world if you have that, right? Because it's when it's all quilted, it's all gonna blend in, I promise you. Um, but if you're trying for something, don't try for perfection, just try for smooth lines, moving, moving in a smooth motion, right? That's what we're going for. So that means I need to actually loosen my grip. Doesn't that seem kind of counterintuitive? I know sometimes we think if we just hang on to the fabric tighter and we just get closer to it and we just don't breathe, the quilting will look great and that's actually not the case. We want nice, smooth, fluid movements, same on a long arm. 
So if you are a long armor and you're quilting, you might think the harder I hang on to this thing, the more control I'll have. That's actually not the case. So if you find yourself gripping those handlebars of your long arm, I'll challenge you to use your fingertips. Quilt with just your fingertips because it's hard to clench your whole body with just your fingertips, but I think you'll be surprised that you're still able to move the machine. Now, those of us, when we're working on a sewing machine, can't just use your fingertips, right? I need my whole hand, but I'm not grabbing it. I'm not like, ugh, wrestling it. I'm just holding it in place and moving along. Um, and then maintaining good posture. I hated to even put this on here because it's kind of like the naggy thing, but even if you have the proper height set up and you have everything correct, we still have to watch our tendency to hunch over. And again, I mean, we're all human. It, all, it happens. I do it all the time. Um, but maintaining that good posture means that your back won't be hurting, especially if you have back issues. This is really important um, because we're going to be doing a lot of movements and we want to make sure that we're not tweaking our body or, you know, making it harder to quilt because we want to quilt more. And lastly, maybe most importantly, breathe, right? So it's funny because, you know, I, when I see people quilting, especially newer quilters, our tendency is to hold our breath because we're just freaking out. We're trying not to pee our pants, right? But definitely holding our breath. Focus on the breathing, focus on the breathing. If, if you find that you're holding your breath too much or that you're like just super tense, it means that you're probably being too critical of your quilting. Now I know it's hard not to be critical of your quilting, but you need to try to distract that part of your brain with some music that you like or an audiobook or something just to kind of take a little bit of that critical part away so that you can quilt, but definitely need to breathe. Um, nobody's ever passed out in any of my classes, but sometimes I thought we might come a little close. So you definitely, definitely want to breathe. So hopefully those tips will help give you some ideas when you're, um, you know, trying your machine quilting, but just know that it does take practice and we'll talk about that here in a second, but you might be wondering what this, what is this picture about? Um, before I come back to the full screen, there was a great question about, um, should I stitch in the seams of the panel before I start? So we're going to kind of switch to all the cute, the questions that came up. Um, Nancy said, should I stitch in the seams or stitch along those outlines of the panel before we start? And it is completely up to you. If you're working on a sewing machine, you're basting your quilt sandwich, you can start anywhere you want and you can stitch along the detail of the panel if you want to take out, you know, your pins or if you want to have it nice and stabilized. Um, but however, on a long arm, I just want to take a second and address that. So um, you can thank Michelle. Michelle's one of my long arm owners during our monthly owners chat. She was asking me, how the heck do I do this challenge on a long arm? Now, I know it can be tricky on a long arm because it's going to take six weeks and how do you take it off and back on? And, and I'll try to give you some more detail, but what I wanted to show everybody is the area marked in red will be the first thing we're quilting in the challenge. That'll be the first quilted section. So if you're on a sewing machine, no problem, right? You can go ahead and quilt that and then you'll move on to the next whenever we get to it. However, on a long arm, if we're advancing down the side of our quilt, we don't really wanna leave that whole area unquilted on the inside. So a couple options that you have are to, I, some people said they might just um, put the quilt on their sewing machine and outline all the detail, kind of stabilize it and then load it on the long arm. You can definitely do that. I would use pins to baste it. Now, isn't that kind of weird to say that? If I'm starting on my long arm, and this is actually what I did when I was quilting the sample, because I didn't want to change thread colors, I'm gonna quilt that top section, but before I advance to do the next little bit, I need to stabilize any area that's bigger than my hand, uh, because what will happen is if I roll back, then I'll get these tucks. What I do to do that, and you're gonna to have to use your imagination, but I know that you can do it, I use my corsage pins. They're just long pins that I pin my quilt to the, the leader with. And I pin through the layers and I keep the pins parallel to the bar. So I can roll it up, roll those pins right into the, uh, on the leader. The reason I like to use pins and not basting stitches is I find that it's easier to take out one pin and quilt an area uh, as opposed to taking out a basting stitch. Those basting stitches are usually connected and I find that if I take one out, the rest just kind of come out. And so I want to be kind of have more control of where I'm at. Um, or if you're on a long arm, you can work your way down, stitch along all that detail and that will help stabilize it so that you can roll back and forth. But again, those areas that are a little bit larger, you're gonna wanna put something in it to help stabilize it and that will help keep the fabric from shifting on the back. The great thing about fabric is that it can be shifted and kind of, you know, finagled. The bad thing is sometimes it can shift and then we get what's called ruching on the back. So 
that's just a real quick uh, graphic to address that question. So hopefully, hopefully that makes some sense to you long armors out there. Um, if I'll try to talk a little bit more about that in the next live chats, like maybe I'll show what we're gonna work on next so you can kind of have a, be prepared with that. And also I'll be putting together a downloadable PDF um, on the website that will kind of show you where we're gonna quilt each week and what threads go where, and that way you could just have everything figured out before we start. I know, I know some of us like to have it planned out and I'll definitely do that for you. Okay, so let's talk about some questions that came up on the live chat and then I'll peek over and we'll see about any questions you might have. Um, first of all, no giveaway this week, because if you remember, it's an extra spectacular giveaway, two-week giveaway. So next week, I'll announce the winner of the My Quilted Flora and Foliage panel. So you get the actual quilted quilt that I'll be using throughout the challenge to show samples and examples of work. And like I said last week, it probably won't be bound. Hopefully, you're okay with that. So um, kind of fun. All right, one question that came up. I got this in an email, and I also saw it on the chat before. Should I practice on a quilt sandwich before I use the panel? So you can do whatever you want. Whatever you will do is what you should do. Whatever will help you practice, that's all I care about, as long as you practice. I designed the panels so that you would have something to quilt in and, and an area to know exactly where to put what. Even if it's a piece of fabric with big squares, that's fine. Um, but I find that a lot of people are scared they're gonna mess up the panel. Well, the whole idea is the panel so you wouldn't be scared about messing up your quilt. But if the idea of starting right on your panel kind of freaks you out, it's totally fine. You can definitely start on a fat quarter or on a quilt sandwich. I would aim for about fat quarter size. And if you want, you could have a different sandwich for each section. You could definitely fill in. These are um, all over kind of edge to edge designs. So it's not quite like the rulers where you'll have a specific shape. We'll be filling in chunks of area. So you can definitely do that. And another question came up, um, if I bought the thread kit, will I still have enough to quilt on the sandwiches? Yes, you will. There's plenty of thread on the spool. It lasts for quite a while. I quilted the whole um, panel and I still have plenty of thread left over. So you can definitely do that. So Jennifer said, how do I know if I will like long arming? I like quilting on a sewing machine, um, but I'm not sure about the long arm. So the thing about a long arm, it is a, def a different movement, but we're still making the same designs. So 80% of quilting is just knowing where you're going. Right, so once you know how the design goes, you can usually apply it to your sewing machine or long arm pretty quickly. Spoiler alert, that's why when people come in for a demo, I have them quilt their name because you, everybody knows where their name, how, how to make their name, right? And it's a fun little trick because they're super amazed. But the thing is, you already know the path, you're just learning how to drive a new kind of car, I guess you could say. Um, I think long arming is great because you can move quickly through the quilt, you can have this quick kind of momentum. But if you have issues standing for long periods of time, it might not be the best. You might want to sit down long arm or you're on your sewing machine. And I know that some quilters like to put their hands on the quilt. They, they, want, to, they want to put their hands on the quilt and that's totally fine too. I will say one of the best things about long arming is you don't have to baste your quilt sandwiches. So um, I guess the short answer to your question would be, it depends on your preferences. I kind of work on both. I like how on a sewing machine I can start anywhere I want on the quilt. I like how I can um, switch easily between my quilt sandwiches, but long arming is my first language and first thing I learned how to do. So I definitely love putting on my headphones and then just quilting, it's so much fun. So Jennifer, I'm sure that didn't really help you, um, but if you really do wanna know if you like it, you could uh, try to get to a show, try to get to a shop and do a demo. Um, it, it is a lot of fun. All right. Another Jennifer, two Jennifers, different one. Jennifer Martin said, how often do you practice? Or I'm guessing how often should I practice? So you get better at what you do when you do it consistently. It's not about the amount of time, it's about the consistency. And I'm sorry, we've done so many live chats, I sometimes feel like I'm telling the same stories over and over again, but when I learned how to long arm, I went right from hand quilting to long arming and then had to learn how to maneuver on this new machine, a sewing machine. And so what I would do is at the end of the day, I would spend about 10 to 15 minutes practicing. And it, it was a little bit of a getting used to the movement and I was using muscles in my back that I hadn't used before. It was kind of weird, um, but it, you get better at what you do consistently. I could have done an hour a week, that still would have been consistent, but if you can do 15, 10, 15 minutes a day, it's really, really gonna help you. What happens is when we're making our quilts, we piece our quilt top, you know, we spent a couple months doing that, now we're ready to quilt it. Well, we haven't machine quilted in two months and it's, it's hard to get back into that rhythm. So um, consistency is more important. But then Victoria took it a next step and she said, well, if I do practice, how long until I get good at it? 
And I will say it depends, everybody's different, but if you practice consistently, I promise it won't take that long, I promise. Um, usually what I tell people, get a yard of fabric, make a yard quilt sandwich, pick one design you wanna learn and quilt it over that whole thing. By the time you're done, I bet you'll be pretty darn good at it. The problem is, way too many people get frustrated and disappointed and kind of discouraged after they quilt this much. Well, you gotta keep going, right? There's more you have to do, keep going. And that's when the, um, the skill comes in, I promise. Um, and then also, if you quilt a design and you know you don't love it, don't keep practicing it, move on. But if you like the design, stick with it long enough to where you can kind of get, get a handle on it. Um, but I promise it doesn't take as long as you might think. So, hopefully that helps. Um, and then I did answer Nancy's question, should I stitch on the panel? She was talking on a sewing machine. Again, it's up to you if you wanna stitch along the seams before you come and fill in, or if you wanna do it as you go, or leave it out. So the problem with long arming or, or machine quilting is there's so many options, right? You're like, I don't know what, what I should do. I'll definitely share with you my um, opinions, but you have to remember that's just my opinions. You gotta do what works for you. Try them out, try the different options and see which one works, so. Hopefully that helps um, give you some suggestions. I'm gonna peek over here, and just see if there's any questions. Uh, turns out some people uh, don't like the basting either. Oh, this is so funny. David says, how often do I use the featherweight behind me? Isn't it gorgeous? My husband got me that for my birthday present. It's so beautiful and I don't use it very often. Um, we had a featherweight club that met through the shop and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna come join. And then it got shut down because of COVID, but. I don't use it enough, but I love it because it kind of reminds me of grandpa. You can kind of see him above there and just, I don't know, it's kind of cute. But it's a 1937, that's what I think Jeremy told me. Um, let's see. Uh, Darlene, great, great. For practice, I use a jelly roll race and practice different designs in each row. Yes. I mean, it's how often should you practice? What should you practice? But there's also how should you practice? And having a defined area to fill in will give you a sense of completion when you do fill it in. And it will also let you see what it looks like within the whole context. You're not just looking at the one little bit, you're looking at the whole thing. So definitely a good idea. And jelly roll races, oh, I loved when customers would give those to me because it has those guidelines just right there for you. I could do all sorts of stuff. It was like a grid I didn't have to mark. So very, very nice. Carol says, what thread color to use in the bobbin? It depends. <laughs> Don't you love it? I'm just kidding. Um, you can use any color you want. I used gray pre-wound bobbins. It's like a light to medium gray, um, just because I didn't want to have to wind bobbins or change thread colors. However, if I weren't using bobbins, I would use the same thread in the top and bobbin. Um, but that's just my preference, and you gotta find what works for you. Mary Ellen, a jelly roll race is a type of quilt pattern where you sew a bunch of jelly rolls together and then you make it into a quilt. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Um, Anyway, so lots of great questions. Love the live chats. And the live chats started from the Rulers Challenge, which I think that was back in October. And we're gonna just keep on going right through the challenge. So every week on Thursday, I'll have a live chat and I'll be talking about the design that we just learned, but definitely answering any questions that you might have and you never know where the conversation will take us. And again, you don't have to finish your quilting before you join the chat. Just join along, whether you're quilting along or not. It's just fun to hang out and answer your questions. Um, and if you like the video or you like any of the free content that you get, I hope you'll give the video a thumbs up and you can also subscribe. Uh, when you subscribe or you hit that little bell, it will send you an email when my next video comes out so you don't have to miss it. And it also gives you an alert when I go live on the chat. Um, again, if you have questions about upcoming live chats, I'm gonna be putting those on my YouTube page, my YouTube channel page, and it will have it right on top, the ones that are coming up so you don't have to miss out. Well, I'm looking forward to the challenge starting on Wednesday. We're gonna talk about wood grain design. I'm gonna show you how to quilt it on a sewing machine and a long arm and some variations, plus give you a few troubleshooting tips. So hopefully you've got your quilt sandwich ready or it'll be there soon. If you order it from me, we're shipping as fast as we can and we're gonna have a great time. Well, in the meantime, happy quilting and I'll see you next Thursday where, where we will talk about the first challenge video. Until then, happy quilting everybody.